first, let, let me share this real short little story first before we begin. When I'm in Burundi, I have many opportunities to speak and talk and teach. And Ernest is the headmaster at the blind school. And every time I'm with him, he'll say, Susanna, are you frightened? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I am frightened. So, yes, I am frightened. <laughs> but, he, <clears throat> but he always has a way of you know, reassuring me that um, things will be okay. He said, you can trust God. So I'm just trusting God today that he will help give me the right words so that I can just share with you uh, the work that is going on in Burundi. But I wanted to thank Gleaning especially because they've been a very uh, strong and supportive uh, ministry partner with me even before the Burundi Hope Project was founded. For 10 years, I was a volunteer with another ministry with some dear, dear friends of mine, Jim and Vicki Brooks. But because of health reasons, several years ago, they were forced to come off of the field. And I did not know what I was going to do. I was like, oh, Lord, you're taking this country away from me. I can't go there anymore. How am I going to How am I gonna function? And uh, he showed me a way to continue the work there that he wanted to happen and the way he wanted it to go. So that came about. I was able to uh, found the Burundi Hope Project with my husband, Mark. He has not traveled there yet, but he will begin uh, traveling with me in 2017. He's a school teacher, and he still hasn't you know, given it up. He's still hanging in there. So when he retires, and he will travel more extensively, but he's going to make that maiden voyage in the summer of 2017. And he would appreciate prayers as, as well as I will appreciate prayers, because he has a problem. He doesn't like rice. And that is a very a huge part of our diet when we are there. So we're just praying that we can overcome that. But again, thank you for uh, this opportunity uh, to learn about the ministry. And I hope that uh, you will learn something about it, see how the Lord is working. And one thing I want to make very clear, this is not my ministry. It's the Lord's ministry. And I feel very blessed and uh, very unworthy that I was chosen by him to, to carry on this work. Again, like I said, that was begun by Jim and Vicki Brooks. So I will share a little bit. Uh, about that with you, and hopefully my clicker will work. <laughs> it did, yeah. <clears throat> the, Burundi, the Burundi Hope Project was founded, as I mentioned, uh, by my husband and myself uh, two years ago in 2014. Uh, I am the short-term missionary that travels there. My husband helps with logistics and the administration of a lot of the things here back in the U.S. And as I mentioned before, he'll be traveling with me beginning in 2017. And we were led to this ministry after volunteering with, with Jim and Vicki Brooks. The mission of the Burundi Hope Project is to love God, love people, and share the gospel and bring hope to the people of Burundi. That may sound a bit familiar to you if you are from Thomas Road Baptist Church. But because of our roots with Thomas Road, that was just a natural um, way to develop our mission statement there. Well, he's not to be my wingman, unless he needs a bad word. I don't know. Where is Burundi, Africa, you might be asking? Well, it is in East Central Africa, and it is listed as the third poorest country in the world. There is a state of peace right now uh, that began actually in 2008 after it came out of civil war between two tribes there, the Tutsis and the Hutu tribes. Now, the peace began in 2008, but unfortunately, last year, in 2015, there was an election. And as in all African countries, there could be some unrest. And there was some unrest, which actually delayed a trip that I had planned uh, last fall. But now they've come out of the election process, and they are headed more, to a more stable economy and a more stable environment there, which allowed me to travel last uh, February in order to go there, which we were very thankful for. The country has 10.5 million people, and it is the size of Maryland. So that gives you a little bit of perspective of how large the country is and how many people are actually there. This shows the provinces of Burundi. There are 16 of them. I have been in several of them. But the organization that I work with on the ground there is called the Community of Emanuel Churches. And they have 125 churches spread all over the country through those 16 provinces. There's also nine members of a US missions team that work alongside of the Community of Emanuel Churches, of which I work alongside of when I'm there in the country. This gives you an idea of the network of the, the Burundi Hope Ministry and who our partners are. All of these individuals and organizations, they have a heart for the, the people in Burundi and for the work there. 
Right for Harvest School Outreach is an umbrella ministry of which the Burundi Hope Project is part of. They offer me financial accountability and also ministry support. It helps me be able to operate the ministry without having to be my own independent nonprofit, which is, is very beneficial since it's only really two of us operating the ministry. The community of Emmanuel Churches, which I've already mentioned, they provide direction for the ministry programs because they are on site, on the ground, 24-7. They're actually Burundian missionaries that are working there with, through the churches. Then the U.S. Missions team, they've helped me to provide logistics and they assist me when I'm in the country. They help me with translators, with transportation, with housing, help me coordinate programs. They are also involved uh, with two other global ministries here in the U.S. and they are always looking for new ministry partners to come and serve with them as well. Then I have Burundi Hope Project ministry partners and many of you are here today. Uh, that support the work in Burundi. They can be churches, they can be individuals, they can be private organizations. Without that network of ministry partners, the ministry would not be allowed to do the work that it is doing. The Burundi Hope Project has three main focuses of ministry uh, in Burundi. We have uh, Hope for the Harvest, Hope for Education, and Hope for Health. And I'm going to explain a little bit about the three of those uh, in just a moment. But at any one time, one of the three of those could have priority depending on what the need is in the country and what I'm being told from my ministry partners on the ground. So the focus can change uh, from month to month or even you know, from day to day depending on what is happening there. First I'll talk about Hope for the Harvest. Hope for the Harvest is the church and evangelism program of the Burundi Hope Project. We help with Bible distribution, we help with the provision of church roofing, and here you can see in this picture, uh, there's a, a church called Rufi Yoyo Church, and they needed to build a new building because their original building was built with mud bricks, and they needed to build a building that was stronger, so they used burn bricks, but they needed help with roofing, and roofing is the most expensive element that they uh, need to purchase in order to, uh, to complete the church, and this was a project that some of our ministry partners assisted with, and we also were able to give them Bibles. We also assist with animal projects, and we help to uh, conduct church seminars, and we support an organization there by the uh, community of Emmanuel churches called the Timothy Bible School, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. We also help with special church programs such as vacation Bible schools, youth camps, and also church-wide um, crusades. The Timothy Bible School offers pastor training, and it is an important part of the program there. Jim Brooks often taught at the Bible school there in Burundi, and during uh, the 10 years there, he probably taught there three or four different times through, uh, a year when he was there. In this particular photo, he and Vicki are there together. Vicki is a sign language interpreter, and they were actually teaching a group of deaf pastors and training them in the Bible so they could go back to their churches and in turn uh, train their uh, lay people so they could go out and plant churches. The other thing that we are involved with are uh, ladies' Bible study meetings and seminars, and we use that as a tool for sharing the gospel with the women uh, in the churches there. The Ingabira uh, Agriculture Program is another program of the Burundi Hope Project. Ingabira means gift in the Karundi language. And we are uh, always helping with sustainable projects through the churches. We can help provide goats and chickens and rabbits. And we can also assist uh, families if they are in need of perhaps being able to acquire a rice field. And the church can also help in operating all of those programs. They oversee it so that there is accountability. If a family or a group has decided that they don't want to participate in the program anymore, then the animals from the animal projects or the rice field will be turned back over to the church and then the church will reassign it to some other people. Hope for Education helps uh, with teachers, families, staff, and children in helping with educational assistance in a variety of ways. We have been able to provide educational resource rooms and also teaching seminars at two of the special needs schools that I am able to teach in and work with when I'm there. One is a deaf school and one is a blind school. The Educational Partnership Project provides stipends for teachers who are working at the two special needs schools. 
This helps them supplement their low salaries, which are now provided by the government, which is a, a huge blessing. In Burundi, the government is not opposed to assisting a Christian school, and they are not opposed to having the gospel taught. In their mind, they're helping children to get an education, and if they're, if they're going to assist and we're going to collaborate with them, they're happy to help. Even though their financial assistance is frequently very small, it does help uh, in many ways. The two schools that uh, I work with are the blind school and the deaf school, and they are now inclusive schools, meaning that they have children that do not have special needs come and actually learn in that environment, and this is uh, quite a blessing. There's also a third school that we help with from time to time. It's called the Discovery School, which is a private Christian day school in which um, missionary families and other families in the city of Bujumbura are able to send their children to school there. And they want them to go there because the school environment is, is different in that they teach Kurundi, English, and French. And they also are able to uh, take advantage of smaller classroom size and a different uh, learning methodology than what they would receive in, in the government schools. The Ephrata Deaf School, as I mentioned before, is one of three schools that's operated by the community of Emanuel Churches. It is a boarding school for the deaf students there. They currently have 130 students. When they are not at school, they do go home to their families or their caregivers. They are not orphans. The Kenor School for the Blind is one of two schools in Burundi for the Blind. There are 89 students who attend there, and 27 of them are sighted students that are from the surrounding uh, community that go to school there. The families were very excited when the school opened their doors to sighted students because of the quality of education. It's been given an excellent rating by the government. This is the Discovery School, which is the private Christian school that I was uh, telling you about. And these are some pictures of the preschool classroom there. It was a natural fit for me to go and work at the Discovery School because for 17 years I taught preschool. So I've been involved there at that level uh, for a, a number of years when I've been there. I have ventured up into the upper grades, but I always migrate back to the preschoolers. The Orphan Hope Project is a new project for Burundi Hope, which actually had its roots last year, but we, we are finalizing it and tweaking it now so that we can assist uh, orphans that are involved with other churches in the country of Burundi. Three years ago, there was a devastating landslide that came down went during the rainy season, and it literally killed hundreds of people. When the landslide uh, broke away from the river that was flooded, it came down and was headed for a church, one of the churches uh, that is operated by the Emmanuel churches. When the, when the water and the, and the slide came to the church, it parted and went around the church, and God protected that church. So in that village, people were going to that church for shelter. There was great loss of life, and they had many children that were uh, left as orphans. Last year, a similar event happened along the lake. There was another landslide, and when the landslide hit, rather than it being a river that was you know, overflowing its banks and just taking out <coughs> things around the land around it, everything went into the lake. People, buildings, livestock, everything just went from the mountaintops down to the lake, and again, there was great loss of life. With both of these situations, there were many orphans and many widows left who were there to care for their children with no way of helping to provide for their educational needs. And in Burundi, if you're in the primary school, you need to uh, provide your school materials and you need to have a uniform, but you don't have to pay school fees. When you go to secondary school, you have the uniform, the school fees, and the materials. So it can be quite an expense for these families just paying for their own children, but when they take the these <coughs> orphans into their own homes, they can provide for shelter and food, but they don't have any extra money to send them to school. So last year, I, I just found this out. I was not aware of it. I thought we had only helped 75 <coughs> orphans with their educational fees. We helped almost 400. So we are planning on continuing that program with some uh, different um, opportunities that are, are coming before us this summer. Our goal is to continue to help those 400 children in that particular area 
uh, to get their education. And then once we can help establish sustainable projects with the churches, we can kind of back off on our assistance and then we can use that to help some other schools that might need, or other churches that might need help with their educational programs. The Burundi Hope Project is also partnering with several different construction projects. It can be schools, it can be uh, health centers, it can be, as I mentioned before, church roofing. We do that to some extent, but that's not our primary focus. If we find a need and we have an opportunity with another ministry partner here in the U.S., then we make that need known and that people are willing to help. The other thing that we are now trying to do uh, over the summer is we're trying to get some additional funding through grants and other sources because they're, they're not just a couple hundred dollar projects. We're talking about 20000 40000 and there's even a new school that they would like to build, an all-inclusive school for the blind and the deaf and uh, sighted and hearing children that's going to be a $2.3 million project. So that is, that is way down the road, but it's something that's in the plan, so we are all working together to work towards, towards that end. Hope for Health is another arm of the Burundi Hope Project, and this is one that I'm very excited about because it helps with the health care of not just children but families in the churches. We can help provide things such as health care bags for new mothers when they leave the clinic, and we can help provide them with, with other things as far as helping to pay their medical bills, helping to give them a blanket and a pillow when they go home from the clinic, being able to, to provide them with fruit juice that will just help them regain their strength after an illness or an injury. I just shared with you a general overview of the Burundi Hope Project, but what I'd like to talk about now is how we at uh, the Burundi Hope Project are partnering with Gleaning in the Wings program. One area that I have been asked to serve in when, in, when I travel to Burundi are women's seminars. So we have established the Women of Hope seminars. And what we will be doing is we will be sharing from the Bible biblical examples of women and how they are going, how they can give them hope. Things that have happened in their lives that we can apply to the women in Burundi. Last year when we were there, we shared with the Mary, with, about the Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and also Esther. This year, we will have another Hope, uh, a Women of Hope seminar in September, and we are going to be adding uh, a new uh, segment to it. And we will be uh, introducing the Wings Kits. What we'll do is we will share about the Women of Hope, and then we will also be having a health education seminar in which we hope to distribute the wings kits to, to many of the women there in Burundi. I had several kits with me on my last trip and I shared them with some of the women in Burundi and it was just joy. That there's no other term when they received those. They were so excited about those and I, I asked them, I said, should I, should I bring more of these? And they said, absolutely. So the goal of the Women of Hope seminars is going to be to share in all 16 provinces a seminar and that we will also distribute the WINGS kits. So that's in the works. We'll be taking them when I go uh, in September and then we will hopefully be sending some over on um, the next container that we'll be taking. So are there, are there any questions real quick? I have one short video that we're going to show that kind of recaps my last trip. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those right now. No questions? I either did a really good job or a really bad job. <laughs> right, briefly, uh, I'll give you a synopsis of my trip. Can you explain these? Oh, I'm sorry. If you look at um, my ministry cards that you have, right there, there's attached to it is a, is a soda cap. In Burundi, it's called a Fanta cap because Fanta is a soda that's a special treat, and they don't get those very often. But when I, I bring those back and I use them to give out to ministry partners or people who are interested in the ministry, because for the cost of that soda or Fanta here in the U.S., you can provide uh, meals for one child for one day. So if that soda costs you $1.50, that $1.50 can buy meals for one child for one day. So that's the significance of the Fanta cap. So when you see that, just pray for those children, those families, and that we will be able to help in, in their provision. But that's what those are for. I have a little bit of off the wall question. You're talking about um, sign, sign language. Yes. Is sign language a universal language in other words, that it's if I sign in, in English, is it the same as French or Swahili or whatever? Or is it different in every 
Yes and no. <laughs> if you know American Sign Language and you go over there and you try to communicate, you will be able to do so. What they will do is they will correct you. They correct me all the time uh, about, you know, this is not, you should do it this way. Like, um, here, this is God. This is God. So, there are some differences, but if you know any sign language at all and you're with the deaf, you would be able to communicate. Absolutely. Our, our trip uh, last year, well, actually it was this year, last February, March, I went with a good friend of mine, Debbie Kibler, and here's just a brief rundown of what we did, and then we'll show the video. We were able to establish meetings and, and contacts with our translators and transportation. We taught on the life of David at both schools. We showed afternoon movies at the deaf school. We had educational seminars at both schools. We visited our children that we sponsored through another ministry, and then we attended several powerful church services. We also did computer training with the teachers at the deaf school, and we traveled to the second mission station that they're developing in Yasuru. That was for the first two weeks. Then Debbie left, and I was there for two weeks by myself. So I continued with the lessons on David at both schools. I did teacher observations, uh, helped with two music, music festivals at both schools. We hosted the National Drummers. We developed both resource rooms and organized those. The container arrived when I was there that we had sent over last uh, June, and it got there in February. And we unloaded and distributed all those materials when I was there. We had afternoon activities for the children at the deaf school. I attended several ladies' meetings. I met with the executive committee, which is always an exciting experience, but yes, I was frightened when I met with them. And then we delivered the health care bags uh, to the new mothers at the clinic. So that was the last two weeks. And then I got on the plane and flew home. So I'm going to show you a brief video of... Um, We're going to show you a video of all these pictures, and the music that you're going to hear is actually the students from the, uh, the blind school singing with the Kigobi Church Choir. And I'm probably going to get off of your wild place because I'll probably stand up here and cry. <laughs> Jesus 
Power, never, never lose his power. Shall never. 